Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. This is November 1st. This is our first week as a church in November meeting together in our breakout groups. Uh, good morning to you. I just wanted to say hi and to give you a few things to chew on from our reading today. As a reminder, this is the first of five weeks of November, so we are going to be meeting for four weeks in groups and then out into the final week of November, which is the 29th, we'll be meeting here back in the building if the restrictions allow for our nine, nine o'clock and 11 o'clock service. So great to see you all last week. Um, we had uh, an awesome morning of worship and seeing one another, and uh, I've heard so many comments about uh, how encouraged people were to see one another and to celebrate in music together. And the kids as well, have a good report from the kids ministry that we were able to provide a, a really safe and uh, kind of a well-built space for the kids to be able to, to, to do their thing in the back of the church. And yeah, I mean, it, there were some pieces of church missing. It's not, we're not all back to uh, church as, as usual, but yeah, for the most part, everything was, everything was there in the morning and it was such a great morning to be together. So um, I'm praying for you guys as you enter into this second month of our breakout groups, uh, our home church pods. So I invite you to dig into the scriptures together, listen for what God may be saying to you as a group, and be ready to share out of your heart as you are inspired by God, as you find the meaning of these scriptures for your life today, and as... Uh, you all share, share with one another what you have in common. Uh, as you share out of your unique story in these groups, truly we do find uh, what we have in common, and the Spirit knits that together in a most beautiful way. Today you are reading some of the uh, earliest teachings of Jesus' ministry. He's fresh off his baptism, and he's fresh off his temptation and jumping into ministry in Galilee. And I love the, the readings that we have picked out here for you today. As Jesus calls his first disciples, Peter and Andrew, his brother Andrew, James and John. These are figures of, of early Christianity that those who would be reading the, the Gospel of Matthew for the first time would have known. And would have known in, uh, in a way that they're, they're human, they're human figures, but they were also uh, figures that uh, stepped into the role of disciples so beautifully. James and John, we know, struggled with the humility of being a follower of Jesus. Uh, Peter and, and Andrew as well, in their own ways, all of them met an untimely end for their discipleship, for following Jesus. And Jesus' own call to them at the lake side of Galilee emphasized this. This is not just an invitation, come if you're interested. This is a come, follow me. And the, the, the ways that they were compelled to follow Jesus were so strong that they left all behind. And this is a discipleship which does have to leave behind some things in order for it to work. And, um, and yet we know that what we gain as a disciple of Jesus is so much more than, than what we left. In this instance, they had to leave family behind. And Jesus promised them that those who you will meet along the way, those you, who you will band together in discipleship with, will become your family in a, a really profound way. And uh, that's what a church at its best, you know, we are the descendants of this call of these disciples. We are uh, the, the spiritual heirs of this community of disciples. And so we find our, our fa familial ties uh, very much in the church. And so I hope that, that you in the circle that you're in today begin to find glimpses of that family, that true family where you share uh, out of your commonality of discipleship. Uh, the, the teachings here with Jesus, you know, he goes on to talk about uh, many different kinds of ways that people are blessed as they live. And we think, you know, blessed are the meek, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the peacemakers of this world. We hear those and we think, of course, these are the values that we strive for, the things that which we hope to be true about our character. And wouldn't it be great to be a peacemaker who's meek and merciful? And yet, if we really think about it, if we let these Beatitudes challenge us truly, we recognize that many times these kinds of people are the very kinds of people that our society truly despises. There is a despicable element uh, from the world's vantage point to these Beatitudes. Blessed are those who mourn. Come on, just be happy. Just put on a happy face. Walk around and make yourself feel 
uh, something like happiness. But Jesus is saying, no, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who come to the, to the true part of their, their experience and, and, and mourn. Blessed are those who are meek. And of course, we think of oh, how nice it is for people to be meek. But meek people don't tend to make it in this world. They don't tend to climb the ladder well. They don't tend to uh, find places of social privilege. And yet Jesus is saying there are ways that we need to live which become the salt and the light of the world. This is what he says. You are the salt and the light. When you live in my ways, even when you are despised, Jesus is telling us, you are some of the very things that the world needs to survive. Sometimes I think about salt and light and what would salt and light have meant in a world that was filled only with candles and the sun, for example. Uh, light takes on a new meaning, and a bit different for us who have light at a, our fingertips. Um, also, I think of salt. You know, we have all sorts of spices. We can walk down the, the grocery store aisle and see uh, all of them for, for 97 cents or whatever it is. Uh, these are things which are, are true and distinct things in the world which people long for and find great relief in when when they have them and so I, I don't know what that is today maybe you guys can chat about that a little bit um, you know i was thinking you are the the true peace the true reconciliation the true respite and relaxation and vacation you are the true paycheck of the world i don't know if any of these really truly hit the, the deep meaning of of these verses but what is it that our world is desperately longing for that in the absence of creates so much turmoil and uh, discomfort Jesus is saying that discipleship is serious. He's saying that it's real, that it, it drives us to become ki the kinds of people which are very uncomfortable to become in the world that we live in. And that unless we have a group of people following him and becoming this, the world will grow dim and tasteless. So this, this thing that we're doing here is not just a recreational weekend meeting. We're meeting to gather together one another to be the sustenance of the world. That's what we truly believe about church. We're becoming people who can spread the selfless love of Jesus across the face of this earth. And, and the world needs it now more than ever. Okay, so that's enough for today. I hope that you guys have a great conversation and we'll see you next time. I'm praying for you guys.